Right, so welcome to um, this Digimap webinar about uh, New Rome, the New Rome interface. My name is Tom Armitage. I've got Guy McGarver here helping me answer the questions as they come in. So please do feel free to ask us uh, as many as you can. We like to keep Guy busy. Um, so as you, um, yeah, after the webinar, we'll be sending you links to the um, a recording of the webinar, which we'll put up on YouTube. The PowerPoint slides that we're going through, you'll be able to um, have a look at as well. There'll also be a Q&A transcript, so all the questions that get asked, uh, if we can't answer them at the time, we'll we'll put them into that transcript, our answers as well. And also, at the end of the uh, webinar, there is a feedback form, so it'll immediately open when the webinar ends, but we'll also send a link to you uh, tomorrow as well with the transcript and the, and the slides and everything, so um, you'll be able to fill it in then. So before we get started, I'm just going to run a quick poll to indicate your current status at the institution. So let me just start that poll now. Um, and if you can uh, vote in the poll, just, just saying um, whether you're support staff, academic staff, um, undergraduate, postgraduate, or, or another, you can just write in the, uh, um, in the question, question box, just let us know what you are. So I think that's almost, yeah, that's everyone voted. So yep, thank you very much. Um, let's just close that. So yeah, most of you are support staff with some academic staff and uh, undergraduates as well. So uh, if you want to see that, I can just show you that there. Okay. Great. So back to the slides. So you may have noticed um, now that um, we have a new Rome. It is now the top um, thing in the in the in the Digimap interface. The top entry is the improved Rome. So why did we do it? Well, we wanted to move to a new framework uh, with with the most up to date technology, so that when we come to make advancements in the fruit in the future, further improvements, add new in, uh, things, we can do this without having to sort of start again from, from the uh, beginning. And it's a much more tablet-friendly uh, interface. You'll notice now that there's, rather than clicking and dragging so much um, when you're doing things, it's more sort of click once and then click again, which means that it can be used uh, very easily on mobile devices. And there's been some big improvements in performance in the responsiveness of the maps coming into the interface, uh, particularly when you're customizing and doing that sort of thing. So that's why we've um, updated Roam. Uh, as you can see, there's, there's, there's actually all the existing functionality is still there. Um, there's a few minor improvements to, to removing consistencies, that sort of thing. Uh, the look is, is, is slightly different, but all the functionality has remained the same. So, and also there's full interop interoperability between the old and the new. So if you've um, saved maps or in the MyMaps area, or you're relying on the, the data being the same on the actual map, all of that is exactly the same. You can open MyMaps you open your my maps from the new interface that you saved in the old one equally you can create something in the new interface and go back and view that in the old one as well and we will be running the two uh, old rome and new rome concurrently for a for a quite a long period to allow you to update your teaching materials we're not going to make any kind of dramatic change that everyone now has to use the uh, the the uh, the new version so uh, quick poll again um, can you, has, has everyone here used the new Rome application? So I'll just launch that poll there. If you could just indicate whether you've used it or not. Seems to be a good mix of uh, of, of both um, both people. So yeah, fifty fifty, yes and no. Um, so uh, right. Well, what what I'll do is I'll give you a quick rundown of the similarities and the improvements that we've made. And then I think the best thing we can do is, is, is give you a, a live demonstration. So the same data in the backdrop, um, the controls, the zooming and uh, all that kind of stuff, all exactly the same. The same base maps, the, uh, the printing mechanism is all exactly the same. Overview map, map content panel, map information panel are all just as you uh, had them in the old interface. Where we have made improvements, 
uh, is we've moved a lot more functionality into that sidebar on the left-hand side and allow you to vary its width and collapse it completely. Uh, all the searching is done through a single input box, which was, is up on the top left there. Um, so the open and save my maps are now in the my maps panel on that left hand side and it, it's yeah it's, it's sort of a little bit easier and a little bit slicker in how you do that uh, again with the overlays that's in a panel on the left rather than being a, a drop down uh, from the top and we've added a lot more tool tips to everything so it's a lot easier to uh, to see what's what's going on to know how to use a tool from the start the annotations uh, yeah just um some big improvements here on, on how they work uh, and it's again it's all on the uh, on a panel on the left hand side um, the modify tools all kind of work in the same way that you select the item and then you modify it but um, when you're doing things it's, you no longer see all the different vertices if you're adding and removing these sorts of things uh, and it's just a lot a lot easier but we'll, I'll show you that in a moment the measurement tools again so now you can do multiple measurements um, so you can draw two lines and have their lengths on the map or a line and an area, as many as you want, and they can all be displayed simultaneously. And you're also getting metric and imperial measurements for both um, distances and areas. On the map information panel, we've added latitude and longitude coordinates, and there's a, a capture coordinate um, function that's been added as well, so that you can click on the map and it you can still move your mouse around, but you, you'll have the coordinates in, obviously, latitude, longitude, and, and national grid. They're displayed, so you can cut and paste them into something else or, or just not be worried about nudging the mouse before you've written them down completely. And we've also added a Locate Me button uh, as well on the interface, which is, which is quite cool. So um, I'm going to come out of the presentation now and jump into the interface. So there you can see the updated roam is at the top of the list there. Um, and we click in there to go in, just usual login, um, and then the interface will open. Okay, so there we have the, the map. As you can see, there's more stuff on the left-hand side. We can shrink this panel or uh, expand it if you want more um, space for it and you can collapse it completely and to get it back you just hit the arrow there at the bottom so um, just going through this side panel we have the overview map which again just as before will give you a little red box showing you the extent of the map it does include what's underneath that side panel so that's why it's looking quite uh, quite wide over there on that side. It includes what's under the panel because when you collapse that there, it's all of that area on the map. Other than that, works the same. So into the map content, just as before, uh, a legend for the map. Um, but when you zoom in, uh, we've got the base maps up here now. As soon as you get to a layer that's um, a vector data set, then you can start to switch on and off those layers and customize your map so they're nice and speedy we've got a map uh, using the strategy data with no roads on it again we can take the railways off or we can just put everything back on very good very quick uh, and very speedy um, the my maps area so we've got here um, a list of maps that I've made a lot of these older ones down the bottom there are actually made in the old Rome um, and we jump click on the on the map there and it jumps to the location and gives you the um, the, the map that you uh, saved before um, again we can hop up to Glencoe here see the map zoom in and out and we've got our overlays in the next one there's our hill shading so we can add that hill shading to the to the mountains around Glencoe very nice and then down to the annotation tools. And I'm guessing this is where it sort of, instead of it being its own little floating box now, it is on this left-hand menu. So we can sort of squeeze that up a little bit if you're wanting to draw lots of information on the map. So adding markers. Um, the tool that you're using is highlighted in yellow on the side there. Uh, we can scroll down. So it's mainly this uh, where we're drawing features now. So I've just clicked once on the map there and then it follows your cursor wherever you want. So if you're using this on a tablet, you can just 
tap again on the map and that sets sets the square uh, similar with some of these other things the the draw polygon again it's just tapping and then a double tap to finish you can see there if you look at the tooltip on the mouse uh, it's telling you what to do next so double click to stop drawing and there we go um, so if we want to um, modify one of these features we just need to select it first so we highlight it it goes yellow and then we can use these modify tools so there's a move just drag it and you can see release mouse button to finish or click and drag to, to the, move that feature modifying the vertices so we're not got those you used to have the gray points on there but now you'll see when we get close we get this little yellow sorry little blue marker on the yellow line there and then we can just click and drag that and it's saying release the mouse button to finish and so that's how you modify if you want to um, delete a vertex in there it's telling you on the tooltip there to just to hold hold down shift we're on the vertex click on it and it deletes so nice and easy to use again similarly with the transform we get a little box around there now so it's a little bit more obvious as what's going on and there you can just reshape your uh, uh, feature the scale Again, we've got the box, so it, it's sort of a bit more obvious. Sometimes it was a bit confusing on certain shapes as to what actually was going to happen. Rotate, you get a little compass um, arrow in there, um, which kind of tells you where it was facing originally, uh, and then you can just change and rotate the, uh, the thing around. And again, of course, adding the labels, it asks you to enter, enter the text. So you just put in your text, and then there you've got the label. So Again, up here we've got measurement labels, that's still unchanged, so we can just add in uh, those features there. So just like before, if I save this map uh, in the My Maps, um, we go to Save, we just give it a name, Test, and then click Save, and there it is, and it's ready to view. We've got a little message bottom right saying the map's been saved, and there it is in the list, in the open list there. So, uh, next thing to have a look at is um, the uh, measurement tools. So here again, very different to how it was before. It was just a tiny little box that popped open before. Now we're set. Uh, we can just measure distances. Uh, again, it's a double click to stop. But you can see over on the side there, we've got a measurement in meters and one in yards for the distance. And if I go and select area now, we can um, draw an area up here. We've got, again, the distant, the, the area in, in kilometers square, but also in acres as well, measured over here. And we've still got our line, our distance measurement is still on the screen at the same time. If you select delete measurements, you can just click on the ones to delete them, or you can hit the delete all, and that clears them all off the map. So, um, what's next? We've got down at the bottom here our map information. Let's widen this out a little bit. So here we can see um, we've got the usual information, the map product that, that's in the backdrop there. Um, so this one we've, we've got the terrain 50 contours and the, and the vector map district products making up this map. The license that those data products are under, so this is open data the default print scale so that'll be roughly what the scale is on the screen as well we say roughly because it does depend on the resolution of your screen uh, and a whole load of other factors but it will be roughly around about 1 to 20,000 we can't be precise on that because um, the size of people's pixels and the size of people's screens does have an effect on that value but the um, scale bar in the bottom right there is always correct so there is always a, a, a scale thing that you can refer to um, you've got the map extent again that includes the area underneath the panel um, then you've got the grid references which we had before but we now have also we've got this um, WGS 84 the latitude and longitude of where your cursor is on the mouse now as I was saying we've got this coordinate capture so if I switch that on when I click on the map now we get a marker and that marker the point of the marker is is at these coordinates here so the the latitude longitude british national grid or your grid reference so wherever you click that becomes a permanent uh, marker so so you're not having to sort of hover your mouse around like you used to and you sort of you get all oh, right that's it and you go to your keyboard and and you nudge it and 
you've, you've got to go back and reset. So it's just a lot easier to capture information uh, from the map. So, um, so yes, pretty much very much similar to how it was before. Um, we've got this locate my position, so I'm going to click that. Uh, it's uh, asking if um, we're okay with um, uh, with Digimap knowing your location, so we can click allow, uh, and there it's put us somewhere in Edinburgh, obviously not quite where we are. Uh, that must be where the um, Wi-Fi exchange or whatever it is, telephone exchange is that, that, that's nearest to us. Obviously this works much much better when you're on a tablet or mobile device because it's going to use the uh, the um, the internal GPS or, or positioning that your your tablet has set up uh, and and locate you in a in a much more accurate position. When I tried this earlier, it did put put the uh, much much closer to to our true location. So I think we may have switched to um, the switch servers or something like that to one that's further out of town, and that's why it's giving us a slightly different one. So um, that's the, the main thing. We still have other things. We've, we've decluttered this top bar, essentially. So the search, again, um, if I was to have a look for, for Glencoe, that's all up there in that top bar. So we hit the search, uh, and the results appear here. Again, we get this marker um, on, on where the, the actual location is that the search has taken you to. So if I were to go over to Aberdeenshire here, We've got um, we've got a different uh, Glencoe there. Um, it's more like a small settlement or a farm even. Uh, and there's also the the uh, the roads. So it's Glencoe roads in different places or roads that are within Glencoe that you'll see in this list here. Uh, and then we can have a quick look at at the printing. So again, very similar to, well, exactly the same as it was before, just in a slightly different uh, uh, frame. But yeah, so if we were to print this area, this is the, the map, what the map would look like. The layout preview shows you the extent of what we'll print. So if we change that to A2, for example, you can see there a much, much bigger area, but the content stays the same. So uh, again, we can manually change the sale, give it a title, all these other things here. So um to have a quick look at some of the other interfaces because they've all been updated to this new style. Historic here, um, again, the main difference is the, uh, the the decades across the top there. Um, and as we zoom in, we can get to we'll get to the historic data. Um, there we go, and you can see the different decades available. So again, it's just very similar to how it was before just slightly subtle differences in the styling uh, and the locations of things. So we can hit the locate my position again. So here we are just outside of Edinburgh. Um, the get feature info tool is up there on the top. So if I click on the map, that's going to tell us the date that was surveyed and the date it was published because this is a Scottish map. Uh, and the two up button will again open the two screens. And at this point, you're probably going to want to collapse that sidebar to pan around, but you've still got access to things like the different decades of data at the top. So you can do that comparison over time. But yeah, um, the other things we've got in here, so we have um, the, on the save image as, which is a bit different, so it's uh, allowing you just to capture the image from the screen there um, uh, in JPEG or PNG format. So it's a bit different to printing, but but because these are sort of static maps that's the way we do that there and we have the overlapping map selection so where you have overlapping maps you can um, filter between which counties maps it is that you want to look at so if you can take away all the other maps except the Edinburgh ones you'll see all the data disappeared from that side of the border if I click on the Lithgowshire you can see we're just getting maps from that side of the border uh, um, so or all and you get to see all maps so very important where actually the maps truly overlap and you get this sort of blurring double vision effect and you want to filter that out um, let's have a quick look at some of the other collections uh, in geology we'll have the uh, opacity slider which is there above the map which allows you to change the opacity of the geology data overlying the the base map there so yeah and again all the different base maps can be accessed in here. 
we have quite a few in geology when we zoom in get to the to the 50,000 scale data level there we've got all the 1 to 50,000 10,000 and all the soil uh, information too so this allows you to tell how um, how alkaline the soil is likely to be based on the rocks that are below it uh, other things that we have in here that are a bit different so the geological uh, active legend is the, is the main thing and that allows you to click on uh, information in the legend and it will display it on the map uh, there you can see it highlights that particular feature from the legend on the map not particularly useful in the soil here but if I change to um, the rocks then um, we've got loads of different sorts of rocks and often very similar colors so it might be quite hard to tell the difference between these two um, maps uh, rocks on the map but if we highlight them there you can see um, the ones from each different thing being highlighted equally if I click on something on the map it's going to highlight that in the legend so the bedrock has been highlighted as being the Pennine lower coal measures and the superficial deposits are the glacio fluvial deposits there okay so we're sort of that's covered the main different things all the others the, the, the sort of the opacity the get feature info it's all the same in, in all the other things I'd just like to jump back to the slides for um, the last few just to sort of go over a few other points oops Oh, right, so that was the time scales. So um, we released this new uh, Rome on the 17th of May as being the production version. Prior to that, you could have seen the beta. There were a few uh, changes we've made to, to go into the production version. Um, so the old and new Rome applications will run concurrently until at least the 31st of July 2018. So um, at least until... The, the summer holidays have begun um, again if we'll remove the old one uh, when usage declines so um, and we'll advertise you give you at least a month's notice before we remove it um, if you've got any kind of special demand that you really really need it then please do let us know um, but we're hoping to you know it, it will definitely be um, switched off by Christmas unless there is uh, any kind of real specific need for us to keep it on longer than that um, so feedback we've had feedback on the beta version um, so yeah we were a bit concerned that we would remove the Rome clients before the teaching materials had been updated so we, we were not going to do that to you so don't worry about that um, people weren't finding the search box where it was so we've moved that up to that top left side where where most people are, seem to expect to find it and yeah we, we had a complaint that that sidebar was taking up too much room and that's why we've allowed it to be flexibly sort of increased and decreased as well as completely closed so that you've got a bit more flexibility people have different screen resolutions so um, it's uh, it's really quite important to, to 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 be able to let them decide how wide that sidebar is so after the webinar, which is going to finish uh, very shortly, um, when when I close it, you'll get a survey, so which will be asking you all about how you like the new look and feel and how easy you do find uh, it is to find the functions that you're using and if there's anything that you don't like. So really, we are really encouraging you to uh, to give us as much feedback as possible again if uh, if you think of something later here's the email telephone we have the web chat um, please feel free to, to to use any of those channels to um, to give us your your feedback and let us know you, how you what you think of the the new Rome so I think that's it um, have we got many questions we'll, um, so okay if you have got any questions we will hang around until um, 1 30 I'll then close the webinar and um, that's when the poll will appear but obviously if you if you've got to rush off now um, the, there'll be a link to the poll when we uh, send out the email tomorrow with links to the recording and uh, and the Q&A and everything like that so um, I'll just say I think that's it so thank you very much for listening um, you can have a look at the Adena events page or the events page on the Digimap blog to see what other webinars are coming up. Uh, we'll, we keep adding more as and when. So um, thank you very much for listening.